Hello everyone, in this video, I want to talk to you about microbial biofilm voltammetry, direct electrochemical characterization of catalytic electrodetached biofilms. Before I'm starting my presentation, thank you to Professor Saki Young and all of my friends for watching these videos, and I'm Aurelia Salsabila from the Department of Materials Science and Engineering, Chanam National University, and I'm taking the Clean Energy Technology class in 2022. This is my outline for my presentation. You can scan this barcode if you want to download this journal. I will start this with the introduction. Metal-reducing anaerobic bacteria Geobacteraceae catalyze the transfer of electrons from reduced electron donors like acetate to oxidized electron acceptors like iron, 3. Metal-reducing bacteria must have a complete mechanism for transporting electrons across the inner membrane, periplasm, outer membrane, and outer surfaces in order to reduce minerals with varying, first is crystallinity, the second is redox potential, and the third is surface charge. The purpose of this journal is to analyze the growth of thin Geobacter sulfuridusins biofilms on polished glassy carbon electrodes using stirred three-electrode anaerobic bioreactors controlled by potentiostats and non-destructive voltammetry techniques for viable biofilm characterization. The problem from this journal is still needs a reliable quantitative method for studying electron transfer between living cells and conductive surfaces. The solutions from this journal are, this study provides the basis for cataloging quantifiable and defined electron transfer phenotypes as a function of potential, electrode material, growth phase, and culture conditions and provides a framework for comparison with other species or communities. For materials and methods divided into five categories. First is the bacterial strain and culture media. Step 1 is to subculture the G.sulfuridusins with a vitamin-free anaerobic medium at 30 degrees Celsius. After that, all media were adjusted to pH 6.8 and flushed oxygen-free. For the last step, all media were initiated by inoculating within 3 hours. The second is electrode preparation. Step 1 is cutting the glassy carbon electrodes, then polishing glassy carbon electrodes with sandpaper. Next is sonicated and soaked overnight. From each experiment, the electrode surfaces were cleaned with sodium hydroxide. The last step is, to polish the electrode to refresh and clean the electrode. The third is electrode cell assembly. Step 1 is, glass capillary tubes with a diameter of 3 mm were heated, and then soldered to copper wires inside the capillary. Step 2 is a salt bridge made of a 3 mm glass capillary and a 3 mm vicor frit was used to connect reference electrodes to bioreactors, then the last step electrode capillaries were inserted through ports in a custom-made Teflon lid that were sealed with an O-ring gasket. The third is electrode cell assembly for connection scheme to a multi-channel potentiostat. Step 1 is the reactors were placed in an in-house built water bath to maintain cells at 30 degrees Celsius. Step 2 is all reactors were kept running with a steady flow of sterile humidified dinitrogen carbon dioxide pushed via a heated copper column. Then each reactor's magnetic stirring device was positioned above the others. Next is the electrochemical instrumentation. A 16-channel potentiostat is connected to a 3-electrode cell, using software from EC Lab 9.41 version. For EIS parameters, the scan rates higher than 100 mV per second, were performed using a Gamry PCI-4 Fendistat, and data fitting was performed with eChem Analyst 5.1 version, and for CV parameter, CV data was performed with the software utilities for data analysis, kindly provided by D, Hearing. The last one for materials and methods is Confocal and SEM analysis. For Confocal, using a Nikon C1 spectral imaging Confocal microscope, Nikon, Japan, with an X60 lens was used to image biofilm-covered electrodes. For the scanning electron microscope, using Hitachi, Japan series S3500N and used to image freshly polished electrodes. Now let's move on to results and discussion. First I will talk about growth curve. Figure 2 is the growth curve of G, sulfuridusins inoculated into a bioreactor. So, from the figure, 
the analysis, label show when CV and DPV were run, and, medium change, denote the removal of planktonic cells and the replacement of the culture media with a new medium. The attachment phase was most rapid when fumarate-limited cells were used as the inoculum, and a growth phase was characterized by an exponential increase in current, which doubled at a rate typically observed for G, sulfur dosins reducing fumarate. For SEM, Figure 3 is about SEMs of glassy carbon polished with P400 versus P4000 grit treatment. The bar graph shows the maximum current measured during CA after 72 hours of growth. As you can see from the figures, grit P400 shows a current of around 5 ampere per meter square, with grit size around 38 micron meter. And compare with grit P4000 shows a current of around 2 ampere per meter square, with grit size around 14 micron meter. So, from this we can make a conclusion, when the grit of the sandpaper is smaller, so the current will increase. Next for the CV, from figure 4A is a low scan rate CV of G, sulfur dosins biofilms after inoculation, 0 hour, and at maximum current production, 72 hour. And figure 4B is the first derivative of cyclic voltammograms of biofilms, P400 grit polishing treatment, showing the midpoint potential detectable in catalytic waves of mature biofilms. As we can see from figure 4A, the rate of electron transfer rose rapidly at a potential higher than minus 0.3 volt, reaching a limiting current above the potential of minus 0. 0.1 volt. From figure 4B, when the peak at minus 0.15 volt, shows the height increased with the age of the electrode-attached culture. So, limiting the range of potential values when applying CV to live bacteria can avoid potentially hazardous oxidizing or reducing conditions. G. Sulfuridocin's biofilms were not harmed by exposure to potentials between minus 0.55 and 0.24 volt versus standard hydrogen electrode. Figure 5 shows the low scan rate CV for 1 mV per second of G, sulfur dosins at different concentrations of electron donor. The anodic limiting current at minus 0.1 volt rose linearly with the acetate concentration when the acetate was less than 200 micron molar. When greater than 3 mV, the acetate concentrations had no effect on the anodic limiting current. So, with increasing concentrations of the electron donor, the midpoint potential of catalytic curves remained constant. Next we move to DPV. From figure 6A shows the DPV with scan rate for mV per second and pulse height 50 mV under catalytic with conditions at inoculation and after 72 hour of growth. And figure 6B shows the shape of peaks and average potential for DPV of mature biofilms 72 hour between four independent biological replicates. DPV using this parameters, first scan rates up to 50 mV per second and pulse heights up to 100 mV. In mature biofilms, DPV always reveals broad peaks, which increase in height with the age of the biofilm minus 0.105 plus 0.005 volt versus standard hydrogen electrode. Additional peaks at lower and higher potentials, associated with the main peak, were also detected, and consistent with multiple exposed redox centers on the cell surface of G, sulfur dosins stretching over a wide range of potentials, from about minus 0.2 to minus 0.1 volt. From figure 7. Shows the EIS of G, sulfur dosins biofilms at 0.16 volt versus standard hydrogen electrode, modulus of impedance after inoculation and at 72 hours, phase angle 5, 1 after inoculation and at 72 hours. G. Sulfuridocins reduced the charge transfer resistance when EIS was performed at minus 0.16 volt versus standard hydrogen electrode. A first time constant is 1 to 10 Hz and the second time constant is 0.01 to 0.1 Hz. And adding a second time constant did not significantly increase the residual dispersion. Figure 7 shows the biofilm development results in lower charge transfer resistance at the electrode biofilm interface, with two distinct charge transfer processes around 1 and 0.03 Hz. The last one, Figure 8 shows the EIS of mature G, sulfur dosins biofilms, 72 hours, performed at different potentials. Figure 8A shows the Bode plot. 
with modulus of impedance at 0.04, filled black circles, minus 0.06, filled red circles, minus 0.16, filled blue circles, and minus 0.26 volt, filled green circles, versus standard hydrogen electrode, phase angle 51 at 0.04, open black circles, minus 0.06, open red circles, minus 0.16, open blue circles, and minus 0.26 volt, open green circles, versus standard hydrogen electrode. Note that the frequency of the major charge transfer process changes with applied potential, and the second charge transfer process can be observed only at minus 0.16 volt. For figure 8b shows the Nyquist plot. The relaxation times for the electron transfer process at the interface are summarized in Table 1. So from Table 1, we can make a conclusion, when the time constant is lower, the charge transfer resistance lower, and the characteristic frequency will increase. For the last outline from this presentation is about implications. The conclusions from this paper are, first is low scan rates 1 mV per second were chosen since they permitted reactions with a time constant on the order of 1 second to be active as turnover processes at each imposed potential step. Second is the midpoint potential of the catalytic wave at minus 0.15 volt supports a model with a dominant rate limiting electron transfer reaction and shows that G, sulfur dosen's respiration rate does not increase when cells are provided with an electron acceptor with a potential greater than 0 volt. Next is the voltammetric techniques that were previously created to describe the electron transfer processes caused by enzymes adsorbed at carbon electrodes can now be used to describe live biofilms. The last one, electron transport from entire cells to electrodes can be measured in vivo using voltammetric methods, which are non-destructive and replicate natural environmental circumstances. For this slide is talk about the future works. So, future work will focus on the use of electrochemical techniques under non-turnover conditions to better elucidate these electron transfer kinetics for a more complete understanding of the interplay between microbial catalytic abilities and interfacial electron transfer. The advantages from this journal in this study shows how the response of an entire film to various applied potentials can be systematically measured and analyzed to produce data that is easily comparable across species, conditions, or electrode surfaces. And for the disadvantages our first is, in this system, with what appears to be slow interfacial electron transfer kinetics, the potential difference between the anodic and cathodic peaks for a given redox pair can change significantly even with a small change in scan rate. For the second is, we have not discussed electrochemical techniques under non-turnover conditions in order to better understand the interaction between microbial catalytic ability and interfacial electron transfer. Now we will jump to the questions for the quiz. The first question is G, sulfur dosens based bioelectrosynthetic systems are still in their early phases, is they have the potential to serve as platforms for bioelectrocatalytic applications? The second question is why do G, sulfur adducens provide high power outputs in microbial fuel cells by forming well-structured biofilms on anodes? The third question is why do the majority of G, sulfur adducens indicated proteins that participate in electron transport have several hemes or redox centers? Thank you for your attention. See you in the next videos. Very good, very good. Okay. So, thanks for your presentation.